from the area, put on your gloves, and roll the mercury beads onto a sheet of paper or try sucking it up into an eyedropper. If any of you have worked with mercury, you know that this is not an easy task to do. The mercury beads tend to disperse readily and are very difficult to capture. Once you obtain uh, them and place them on the paper, place that in an airtight container along with the eyedropper or the paper that you used to pick it up. Then it's important to ventilate the room. You can do that by turning a fan on, opening the windows, at the same time, you would want to be sure to close this room off from the rest of the area, at least for several hours. Then you would contact the public health department and ask uh, their um, sense as to the best way to dispose of the mercury that is now in this airtight container. Glass thermometers are delicate, hollow, glass tubes containing mercury or more commonly now as I've said this mercury free substance. This substance is sensitive to temperature changes. When this substance in the thermometer comes in contact with heat in the mouth or other body area, the substance rises up the column until a maximum temperature is achieved. That usually takes about three minutes. The outside of the glass thermometer is marked with lines, sometimes called calibrations, and numbers. These markings help us measure exactly the temperature reading displayed. On the screen, you're going to see a thermometer with lines and numbers. Starting with 94 degrees Fahrenheit, you will note that there is each, there is a long line indicating a one degree elevation in temperature. Only every other degree is marked with a number. So there is a long line at 94, a long line at 96, 98, and so forth. The long line for 95 degrees is there, but it does not say 95, and the same with 97 and the other odd numbers. Each shorter line equals two-tenths of one degree. For example, the first short line would be 0.2, the second short line would be 0.4, the third short line would be 0.6, and so forth. In the section of your student manual that talks about taking a temperature, you'll find a page entitled 10 Thermometer Readings. At this point, I'd like you to stop the tape and take a few minutes to record the correct reading of the thermometer in the space provided in your student manual. Let's see how accurate you were in comparing your answers to the correct answers that you see now on the screen. I hope our measurements agreed, but if they didn't, take some time to practice with someone until you are consistently accurate with it. Now let's talk about the types of glass thermometers. There are primarily two different types. The first is an oral thermometer. An oral thermometer usually has a long slender bulb at the end which is inserted into the mouth axilla area as well. It may have a green or blue tip at the stem end, the tip that you're holding on to. 
The, the second type of thermometer is a rectal thermometer. This usually has a stubby, short bulb end that's inserted into the rectum and a red tip at the stem end so that you can distinguish it easily from the oral or uh, axillary thermometer. It's very important for health reasons not to get them mixed up. Sometimes temperature measurements are done using a disposable sheath. If that's the case, it is applied so that there is more uh, prevention of risk of contamination. Now, a few guidelines for safe use of any glass thermometer. First, always wear disposable gloves when measuring temperatures. Check the glass thermometer for any chip. Shake the thermometer vigorously so that it records below 96 degrees Fahrenheit. Always do the shaking away from the patient and any hard objects to prevent sh uh, striking objects in any way. Never leave a patient alone while a thermometer is in place. Allow the thermometer to register for at least three minutes for oral temperature, three minutes for rectal temperature, and 10 minutes for an axillary temperature. After removing the thermometer and before reading it, wipe from the stem to the bulb end with either an alcohol wipe or a piece of tissue or if the sheath has been removed, then remove the sheath at this time. Do not touch the bulb end that has been placed in the patient's body. Clean thermometers only with cold, soapy water or disinfectant solution. Do not use warm water as it may ruin the thermometer. Now a few specific guidelines for using an oral thermometer. Never use an oral thermometer with a patient unless they're able to breathe easily through their nose. Also, don't take a temperature orally with a person who is coughing excessively or has other severe respiratory distress. Also important not to use an oral thermometer if the patient is uncooperative or restless. There's always the concern that they might bite down on the thermometer and uh, break it in their mouth, which could cause serious harm. Do not use either uh, if the patient is receiving oxygen. Always wait 15 minutes after patients have been smoking eating or drinking liquids. Otherwise, you would get an inaccurate reading. Place the thermometer underneath the tongue and at the back of the mouth. Now I would like you to watch as an oral temperature demonstration is shown. Have the patient rest in a comfortable position in bed or the chair. Ask the patient if he or she has had any liquids to drink or has smoked within the last 15 minutes. Wait 15 minutes before taking an oral temperature if the answer is yes. As with all procedures, explain to the patient what you are going to do. Put on your gloves. Remove the thermometer from the container by holding the stem end. Rinse the thermometer with cold water. And wipe with a tissue from the stem to the bulb end if the thermometer has been in disinfectant. Check to be sure the thermometer is intact. Read the mercury column. It should register below 96 degrees. If necessary,